We've already done some complaining about pets, children, spouses. We've done the first half of this, right? The complaints. Now we're going to be looking at um, how do we respond to something like that? If someone complains to us, um, this isn't, these, these dialogues aren't really different than what we already do in English or Spanish or anything else. But we want to look at some of the vocab that uh, will regularly traditionally respond with. And that way you're a little bit prepped for it. You, if you see it, you know, oh, these are the signs. If you remember the movie Terminator, um, the guys outside the apartment talking to Arnold Schwarzenegger and you see the little drop down menu of possible responses and he chooses one. That's what we want to do is have some prepped uh, responses so that you have a short list to choose from as opposed to, I could say anything, right? So uh, one person, a practice dialogue, Normally, this will come out in conversation. Go around, ask, what'd you do over the weekend? And someone will say, oh, my roommate and I got in a fight. I'm like, hmm. So anybody have any suggestions and stuff like that? Or, you know, someone has a complaint about their pet or whatever. It's nice. You can you can oftentimes bring these right out um, with very little prep. So oh, always. It's a nice big circle. Always. With the back of the hand. This is another way of saying tends to. His personality tends to do that. And any number of ways that you can sign it, um, this concept, right? Um, An ICL, an instrument classifier, we're showing, we're not actually showing the toilet flusher, right? The little handle. What we're showing is how we use it. Old fashioned one. <coughs> and then sick of. So it's the sign for sick, we just twist it. So boop. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this kind of like, oh, that sucks, right? Oh. Pshaw. Uh, it, depending on the attitude on the face, it can be like, yeah, that's nothing versus, oh, or aimed at the person. Forget him, right? Oh. Idea. Why not? Why not? And I'm sure you've seen like this for why as well. If we're going to do why not, it tends to be the full formal sign for why not? Why not? Here's a new idea, right? Why not? Mm. Write a sign, right? Right, print a sign. You do this; it's sort of like you engraved it in wood. But I would probably sign like paper. Flush, please flush, and then. Boom, boom. Um. What's nice about these, and you look at the examples, that they're very simple. In ASL, we tend to add visual details, clearly because it's a visual language, right? So in the sense that sometimes in English, we'll use a sound effect, onomatopoeia, right? To like, um, if you tear something, right? we'll add those little sound effects to add details, uh, phone ringing, uh, knock on the door. So there he is, knock, 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 here I am, right? Think about using the same things or similar things in ASL is, um, if you're gonna say, why don't you put up a sign to remind your roommate to flush the toilet? Well, where are you gonna put up the sign? Like in the closet? No. So if you're like, toilet, sit, boom, maybe put a sign right here on the wall, right? Um, if you know what the space looks like, like I had used to have an apartment where there was a wall, like literally right in front of the toilet was here and there was a wall right there. So you kind of had to turn and sit and it was really a badly designed apartment. Anyway, um, that you could have put a sign like right here, flush you idiot, right? 
So think of those details. If you've got specifics, if you're talking about it, how do you add details? Remember, we come back to the sign of if you pull it back like this, it means add details to expand on. <coughs> so why not? Um, bum, bum, bum. Then the response, ah, oh, good idea. Good or good idea idea. And most of the time it comes from up here, but you'll notice that signs tend to drift down below the eyes because we don't like to have things in front of our eyes. Especially if you wear glasses, you don't want to smudge it, right? So good idea. So either we won't touch or we'll come from just below, but the technical sign is from up here. Good idea. Or good thinking. Or I like that. Oh, I like that. Will, 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 right? Will. So, possible. I could. Fancy. So we've got lots of possible responses. Um, and again, we got that. Um, whatever the time time is, every day, every morning, once a month. This is a basic template of a sentence. They're good to practice with just change out vocab. And so that you kind of get the feel of how a sentence in ASL would read. Um, these are really good to do if you if you can kind of have a notebook where you jot down different sentence types and then switch out individual vocab. It's really good practice to get sort of that in, in the feel in your body. Um, so So what is the complaint in there? Is the complaint that dog has to go to the bathroom? Is the complaint that it's every day at seven o'clock in the morning? What is it you want to say? Oh. Hate it. This is a good place where you could play with a um, rhetorical question. Me, sick of what? So we could go around, we could do demos, have everybody just come up with something that they're complaining about. Um, so think of the things in your life that you could complain about. I'm sure there are some things. And just switch out that order of what is it you want to complain about? Who? What? Is it a tendency? Is it an always? How regular is this? Um, how often, like a time sign, give it now get specific with that. Then what's the action that's the problem? And then your response, I'm sick. That could even be seen as a topic, right? When my pet every morning gets up at seven o'clock, I hate it. I'm sick of it, right? So here's the comment. This is the action my dog does. This is my comment. I'm sick of it. Or you could say, well, I'm sick of something, and then give the information, right? So we, there's two basic patterns. You can also do it framed where you say, I'm sick of what? This, yeah, I'm sick of that. With a little punch at the end. So sentence structure is something that it's good to practice over and over again, just to sort of get the feel of it. Um, and literally this chapter is mostly repetition of the same vocab from 14.4. Um, now, Finish. You've seen the sign for finish, right? Peekaboo, right? Finish. Finish. Finish is not flat. Finish is palm, back of hand to palm. So it's, um, finish you, but that's a question. Finish you. What does that feel like? Think of this as uh, the sign we've done for um, have done already. Have you tried? So finish you. Have you asked your neighbor? 
not to do that. Finish you. And then a verb, right? Or finish told him, informed him, call police. So finish, meaning have you already tried this? Um, other suggestion, why not? Suggestion, right? And the last, a, more, a little bit more insistent, you should, you should do something, right? You should call the police. Or you should uh, go join the party. So finish, have you already done something? Why not? And then a suggestion. Then you should or need to. Right? And depending on how insistent, if you remember, should, like if it's really insistent, it tends to be a very direct move. It, boom. If it's kind of waffly, like, well, maybe you should think about, it tends to be a little bit more hesitant possible. <clears throat> so we could demo this in class. Most of the time, it'll come right out of conversation if we just start talking. Everybody's got something to complain about, right? Especially if you're in college and have a roommate. Um, and again, more of this is in-class activity. 14.5 is a bunch of smaller things to practice. We can complain. Here's the, the format of the conversations we're going to do. And then again, I put the vocab reviews. Um, I'm going to do some separate... Um, if you've noticed with 13, 14, and then I'm going for the rest of the pink book, uh, it's not very easy to put the assignments in with the lecture materials. The books are designed very differently. Uh, the lecture materials take us through a process of things. And the student book and the DVD, the online videos, they all go, they work as a sort of companion piece. Uh, so they don't follow the same path. Uh, so I, I will do some separate videos. Uh, I may include them in the PowerPoint of assignments or they're posted online in the Canvas, Blackboard, something like that. Um, so we'll treat them as separate things. But for right now, this little bite-sized chunk is that dialogue of how to respond. So um, look at the vocab from 14.4 and start putting in suggestions to it. Um, ask a friend for something to have them complain about something, give them a suggestion. One of the assignments I'm going to, I'm putting up onto Canvas and hopefully it will work in a, uh, pass it on semester after semester is, a chain where you say, I've got a problem. Someone else suggests, oh, how about this for a solution? And you go, mm, that won't work because give some reason. And then they respond and just keep going back and forth, getting more and more ridiculous. Um, be kind of fun. And um, we could play with some new vocabs, some insane things, play with classifiers. So something to think about just to practice. Um, if you're familiar, oh, that's what I could find. If you're familiar with, uh, there's a Monty Python sketch called the Four Yorkshiremen. Uh, there isn't a, there's a BSL version of it, a British Sign Language version of it, but I have, don't think I've ever seen an ASL version of it. So maybe I, it's, it's people comp, uh, ever increasing the amount of horrible childhood they had and la, lives of privation. I don't know if I can find that. But anyway, so take a look at that sentence structure. That's what 14.5 is all about. 14.5? Yes. Is all about a response, a suggestion to I can't stand something. All right, cool. That's 14.5.